Welcome St Mark's and everyone around who has come to see a conversation with Carl Beach. Uh, Carl is on the call with us. Carl is the uh, president of Christian Vision for Men and the founder of the Gathering Summer Festival event for men and a senior pastor of Redeemer King Church uh, up in Chesterfield. He's also a father and a husband and he's here to you know shoot the breeze with us in his own words. Um, and also affectionately known as Beachy. That's uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So, uh, Carl, uh, how are things going at the moment? Uh, yeah, well, in terms of um, uh, life in general, quite nice, actually. I mean, it's, um, it's hard for me to complain. I've got a fairly nice sized house and a garden, uh, and, and one of my daughters came back home. One lives away anyway. Yeah. One who's a vet student came back home, so we, we kind of regret. Well, she came back home just after I paid her rent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so and how is she yeah. finding your new trumpet lessons? Yeah, it's, it's, I'm progressing. I can, I can get a couple of scales out now. <laughs> so yeah, um, in terms of that, it's good. Obviously, recasting um, mission and vision has been a, an interesting exercise, but I like innovation and change. So that, that's been quite cool. So all, all in all, we're doing, we're doing pretty good. Doing all right. Hard to be separated from wider family. So about 200 miles away and my parents are elderly. But um, it's what it is. Absolutely. And how's your church been in this time? Like, so there's obviously been the transition from when the lockdown first happened and now. How's that process been? Yeah, it's it's been a fascinating one actually because we our church was set up with a particular focus on reaching really hurting and broken, lost people really, and, and we're reaching a lot of people who are quite low income. So. I think a lot of churches immediately embrace Zoom. A lot of churches are you know, 80% graduate class, so people are used to video conferencing and stuff. My church is probably 80% not graduate class. So mm -hmm. that's actually been an interesting challenge which you don't hear about a lot. So some people embrace the whole Zoom thing and Skype call, but we had people who didn't have internet, people yeah. who were fighting the technology, people who didn't have iPads or laptops. So we had to transition the church into that very very quickly i mean we kind of saw it coming to a degree i think you didn't need to read between the lines much to see that there was going to be something that needed to be done yeah but we meant we bought a load of cheap tablets for people ironically from china oh. <laughs> and, <laughs> for the irony yeah, and uh, we, we you know we paid for some people's internet subscriptions and stuff like that so basically we got 90 95 percent of the church online but then we also set up a telephone church for people who didn't want to do that so our sermons could be accessed on Sundays through telephone as well. But to be honest, the church has thrived. We've had a few people come to Christ. We've been able to film their testimonies. We've created two new home groups. We've essentially gone to a home group based church. Mm -hmm. We're doing online alpha, online all sorts of stuff. So uh, we've even opened up a pub. We have a pub oh, called- Yeah, Redeemer. I think I saw yeah. that somewhere. Yeah. I love that. So we've got a Redeemer, our church is called Redeemer King. We've opened Redeemer King Arms. Yeah. Uh, we, had, we had 150 people at our quiz night. Just, uh, and, we, and you can have a legal lock-in. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah so all in all church has been really good obviously we've faced some challenges around cvm i lead another ministry i found it called the edge lots of challenges there but but local church um really good i mean it's it's been a blessing actually i think in many ways it, it's a bittersweet time isn't it yeah no absolutely so uh we're at st mark's in corny heath and we've got um a lot of people online and really engaging and in the wider community we've got a really good mixture in the church of people that have been Christians for years, people that have just become Christians. Yeah. Uh, but this has been a really, really shocking time I think for everyone. It's the first time the church has been asked to do this really unique kind of challenge and opportunity. Is there anything that you feel you've learned as a church leader or felt that God has been saying to you for the church overall that might encourage us? Yeah, so um I did have a bit of a weird moment, actually. I, I, one of the things that people don't know about me, I think, well, they do now because I've put a video out about it, but I, I, I keep journals. I'm not, a, I would describe myself as a journaler. Yeah. But I do have journals, but they're full of like things people said, to-do lists, even poems, sketches, talks that I've written down. I mean, all sorts of, I had 20 years worth. Wow. All the same brand, which is, well, I'm a bit OCD. <laughs> anyway, and they're all, they're all on my on my bookshelf, and I was sitting here in my yeah, I'm in my sort of man cave at the moment. It's sort of a bit of a nice. set, yeah. Look at it. I'm classic Iron Man poster. <laughs> so I'm in my, in my man cave, and I was in here just reflecting, um, because 
with the amount of travel I was doing, I'm not doing at the moment. I've just started again a little bit, but I had a bit more time to think, which is one lesson. But I felt this little whisper from God to say to me, you need to throw all your journals away. Oh, so I thought well, that's a bit, that's a bit weird. So I, um, I checked it out with a couple of prayer partners um, that I, I meet with regularly. And they said, I think that, I think you're going to regret it, but it just weirdly feels like the right thing to do. Mm. So anyway, I did. I, th I threw 20 years worth of journals away yeah. and I bitterly regretted it. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I thought, what have I done that Are for? They all black and red ones. You, you said brown. Oh, black all... moleskin, proper nice ones. Oh. All gone. Anyway, I properly regretted it. And um, but they're gone. They've been some landfill site now somewhere. Anyway, a couple of days later, I was praying and I, I'm like, what? why did I do that? And this little whisper, which I believe was from the Lord, uh, went something like this. Son, you need to unlearn everything you've been learning. Everything you've done, you've got to unlearn. Now, bearing in mind, I lead a church planting movement and a mission to the poor nationally and overseas and i've got the cvm stuff and the church so it's kind of like a big picture your strategy for how you're going to do all this mm. you've got to unlearn so i've been at this for 25 years and it felt like i was being deconstructed of everything that i learned instinctively mm. and um i've got this new notepad which is around here somewhere <laughs> oh here it is uh, which thus far has remained empty because I haven't, and it's a different brand, oh. it's a lot deeper. And I haven't, I haven't been able to bring myself to write anything in it yet. But in a nutshell, I think this, I think if, if this thing rapidly changes and turns around, which I don't think it will, but if it did, and we just went back to what we did before, we failed. Mm. Yeah. That's what I think. But I think if we, if we take the lessons that we, we're learning here, we unlearn some of the ways we learn about things in the past. We put the local back in local church and we, we, we recalibrated ourselves and we restarted to learn how people tick, how society works and recalibrate how we've gone about sharing the good news. Mm. I think then maybe we'll do well. What I do know is if you built your church on a vibe, and a vibe alone, you're kind of stuffed. Yeah. But if yeah, you build your church, yeah. yeah, if you build your church not on smoke machines and lights and great music, mm. which can be great, but if you built your church on that, no good. But if you built your church on mission, community, relationships, God's word, properly doing community and life together, I think you're going to be all right. Yeah. But the lesson I'd say, do not go back to what you did before. Has your leadership team started thinking about the kind of the possibilities of the reopening and started making any plans towards that? Yeah, yet? yeah very much so. And, uh, but it's not what you'd think. So I think even my role's changed. So um, now we're all, I think my role is less about um, Uber direction and mm. it's now about releasing people and, and being a little hand on the tiller. I think my job is to keep the temperature hot. Yeah. Prayer hot, mission hot, vision and values, culture, all hot in the centre, but releasing people. Now, I, I will answer the question, but I'll just explain it like this. We've got a guy in our church who's a national, was the national dendrologist. He was a national tree expert. And he's just written a series for us called the, the um, Trees in the Bible. Russell, now, no. now, I like trees. But <laughs> so four months ago... If he had said, Carl, up front and centre, I want to publish this thing across the church and email everyone with it, I would have said, no. We don't do trees in the Bible. We do mission to the poor and alpha and, yeah. you know. Yeah. But now I'm like, great. That's great. Go for it. More of it. More trees. More poetry. Because <laughs> yeah. it's about releasing people. So what I'm thinking is this. Um, we keep the temperature hot as a leadership team, but we won't be meeting back the way we were. A, because... Just because the government says it's right to meet back doesn't even mean to say it's morally right because we've got a lot of people who are chronically or elderly. And there's, until there's a vaccine, I think that would be irresponsible to try and encourage people to go back to meet. I also think it could be quite a cold environment if mm. you've got to sit six foot away from each other. So what I'm doing is this. We've made our church a home group led church. Mm. Our home groups are mini pastors. We, we, we've restructured ourselves completely. And now we'll be, instead of we had, we had 
a lot of money in the bank to buy a building. We were looking at getting a 20,000 square foot warehouse. We only planted the church six years ago, but it's really grown. Wow. We're going to buy this big warehouse, but we decided not to do that. So we put a third of that money in a hardship fund. We thought we'd put people above buildings. So we didn't want anyone to come out of this crisis having lost their home because they lost their job. Mm. And bearing in mind, if you say you're on 50 grand a year and you lose 20% of your income, now you might have lived beyond your means, could still hurt you. But if you're on minimum wage and you lose 20% because you're furloughed and your company don't make it up, you should simply be below the poverty line. Food bank usage in a couple of churches in our network will go up a thousand percent. So we didn't want anyone to, to fall through that crack of poverty. So we, we've, given, we've, we've, we've given our buildings aspirations up. Yeah, I was going to ask, sorry, Carl, was, was it particularly like the funding of all of this sort of warehouse mission, yeah. like get the church, let's really, you know, sort of replant? It was, was that like a conscious decision of like, okay, that funding is now, yeah, we're still working on the church and that's where like the tablets and the home connection. Yeah, we are, all our money is, well, basically we, we're prepared to spend every penny we've got on keeping people discipled, um, roof over their head food in their cupboards uh, we're not going to let anyone lose their business or their home through this that, that's a conscious decision we made until the money's gone but actually the money's gone up <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah. we keep giving it away and the money keeps coming in yeah. but what we have said is we're going to break the church up into clusters of home groups we're looking for the right terminology at the moment but we'll probably have two or three home groups meeting in 10 different locations around the town yeah and we'll have Redeemer Kings popping up all over the place in anticipation it'll only allow 20, 30 people to meet. And I'm prepared to go with that strategy long term and, and maybe buy up small premises. So, you know, on the balance sheet, we've got some assets if we ever did want to gather back in a big way again. But my, my gut feel is we may never meet like that again. Yeah, and we may not be able to. Yeah. I mean, Boris Johnson was saying the other day, uh, we haven't had a vaccine for SARS in 15 years. I think we need to be prepared yeah. For, for something radically different. Now, I think if we just wait for it all to be sold, we're going to end up on the back foot. So I want to keep on the front foot and keep innovating. Mm. So that's so leadership roles changed, I think, for me, and the structure of the church has dramatically changed. But people are rising to the challenge. Mm. And so we, our aim is to get 100% of our people in home groups, and we're at 90% now. Mm. Yeah. Amazing. It's really good. Carl, can I ask you, there's, there's like two sh sh strands here. I can see there's... It's like the, the, the car that has the profession um, and then the, the car that has the, uh, the, the disciple that's trying to learn, you know, you're saying you have being deconstructed in some ways. And I say the two strands, it's like Carl that has the profession is, knows about church planting and in a time where you can't gather and that we shouldn't be meeting, you've somehow managed to turn uh, Redeemer King into multi-church plants all over Chester, yeah. which is just great. Like I love this idea of yeah. you, you, you've now actually spread further. Yeah, we've opened two new ones. We, we'll have another one opening soon. <laughs> That's it's brilliant. Amazing. And then the second strand is is that where you say you, you throw out the journals, be deconstructed, and then there's there's this the the question I have is there's there's the the sort of the genesis of that journey of learning how to be reconstructed again. What, uh, you know, there's, and I think for Christians, it's really easy for us to say, you know, coming to, coming to lockdown, we all sort of become a bit more self-reflective, all think about change, all think about, yes, we've got to, we've got to do this better. You know, the, the, what it was, the majority in all the polls is that we, we don't want this country to remain the way, go back to the way it was. We want better. That's right. Is, is, where is that leap off point to begin that reconstruction? And for Christians, it's very simple. We say Jesus and the Bible, but where was your sort of, what practical things could you think of or that you went through? Um, was it, you know, the, the act of getting a new journal thinking, right, or, or binning the old ones? And could you walk us through that in your mind? Yeah, I, um, I just don't think you should ever stop learning. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think you should ever think you've arrived. Yeah. Uh, I meet a lot of leaders who think they have. Yeah. And they, they, they sound like they're innovating, but actually the core foundations of what they're building on it has never changed. Yeah. Um, and you're seeing that, I think, in... in you know, innovation is not we're going to take everything online. Yeah. That's, that's, that's just like, you know... 
I saw a lot of churches, and this is not critical. Mm. I just saw a lot of churches suddenly replicating what they were doing the previous week, but it was just being filmed. Yeah. I'm like, this everything is now new. Mm. So maybe the physical act was chucking the journals away. Maybe I needed to do that. Um, and buying a new one that I haven't written in it yet. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I, for me, it's, um, it's, a, it's a humility issue. Yeah. Don't think you should ever say as a leader, I've, I've got this sorted. I think it's okay to be vulnerable and say I'm still working this out. Mm. So I've, you know, um, what I've just said to you, I've been, I've been contemplating for two months. And, and letting other people speak into it. Um, I mean, my I'm going to change the entire basis of my role. Practically, it, it just comes out of conversation and being prepared to learn and listen to people, I think. Mm. But also, crucially, listen to God, isn't it? So um, I've, I'm relearning patterns of discipleship as well. Yeah. Sure. I, I mean, across the board, this is, this is for me, really. So um, I... Sorry. <laughs> I picked up on a couple of things that one you've got a man cave and you have a prayer partner and obviously you've spoken about listening to God so for people that are obviously in their home environments they've got family and children some single some not has that been a deliberate creation of those things or was that in place before and what encouragement would you give to people in their everyday rhythm I am um, I've, I've got habits that, I've, that have been long-term maintained for me um i every i mean i every room in my house this is not set up but every room in my house has got uh, different versions of the bible and and i don't use all, all audible bibles unless i'm on the road um I'm, i've got a stack of hymn books I, I, i'll go and get one yeah go on, <laughs> go, go on. there we go everyone can lean in with me I have, look, this is a, this is a Baptist hymn book. And so every, every day, this is the first Bible I ever had. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. 22nd of April, 1990. I, every room in my house has got a Bible. Uh, I've got hymn books upstairs, hymn books downstairs. And I, now I think you can do this whether you've got a lot of space or not. Now I've empty nested. It makes it a lot easier. My, my kids are adults, but even when my kids were tiny, I've always created some space where I could go because I think space is sacred. Mm. And that could be putting headphones on. Yeah. In the, in the same chair. Mm. I think the disciplines are so important. So every day I read a hymn, I read through the scriptures mm. and not what I'm preaching on. It's separate to what I'm preaching. If, if you're a leader listening to this, it, it's, it's going to be separate to that. And I don't just pray at God, I listen. I sit back in my chair and I listen and I do, I think more than people probably think I do because I'm an activist, <laughs> uh, but I can, and I'm slightly on the ADHD scale okay. or probably extremely, but I have, I have, I do believe in discipline, but there's something else I do. Every morning I get up every morning, six days a week, I work out on my patio. Mm -hmm. I lift kettlebells and I skip between half hour to 45, 50 minutes, boxing, skipping and I, mm -hmm. and I, and I lift weights. Because that is just as important to me as spiritual fitness. To okay. physical and the spiritual for me go together. I have to do that. If I don't do that, I'll fall into sin. Yeah. So I keep my, my I try and keep physically strong and I try and keep physically strong. And but I have to have touch points around the place, hymn books, Bibles, notepads. Yeah. Uh, that, that's how I do it. There's disciplines. Yeah, can you imagine that if would it you say you fall into sin without it, but is coping with the whole lockdown all of the changes all of these you you're a man with not just you with many many ministries of brilliant sizes um is, is there a strength in that discipline that say if without it, it you would have just struggled is it more integral than than just yeah, oh, routine? like it's yeah I, I think it's biblical I think there's biblical principles there, you know, about being an athlete in training, running the race. Um, it's just, it's just how it works for me. But in lockdown, what I noticed was a lot of people I was working with, I was going on the Zoom calls and they had bed hair. Now they weren't, or they were still in their pajamas. And I'm like, it's okay, guys. Once or twice a week, 
but you, you don't make every day a PJ day. Get up, get a strong coffee and get outside or inside. Do your Joe Wicks workout, smash some weights, you know, get it, get your head in the Bible. Shower, get dressed for work. These are, these are disciplines or you can just find that life will slip by. Mm. Particularly if you're put on furlough. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's uh, hard. One of the things we found is that so people found that they really handled lockdown in that first initial bit. And the longer it's gone on, the more that the self-reflection has turned into self-hatred or really negative thought, or I can't cope anymore. And like that kind of um, frustration level is sort of going up for some yeah. people. Is there anything you'd say to, to that particular group? Yeah, what I, what, well, I think it all wraps in together. So I think don't make every day a PJ day, pick up something, some new skill, I'm teaching myself the trumpet, as we mentioned. <laughs> um, but do that, try and accomplish something, keep your fitness levels high, eat well, take a multivitamin. I mean, they're just simple little things you can do just to keep, keep yourself healthy because I think they're all linked together. But another thing I say to people is be thankful. Yeah. You can, everyone can find something to be thankful for as a discipline. Yeah. And I think the Lord likes it. So one of the things I like to do is when I wake up, when I'm doing my, when I'm thinking before the Lord, you say thanks to the things that were good yesterday mm. Mm. and get out and get some fresh air particularly now you know you can unlimited we, we have state sanctioned unlimited exercise <laughs> <laughs> but i but i you know i don't want to sound patronizing but these are just and i don't intend to i just think if you keep yourself physically well your mental health will be better and, uh, but keep these spiritual disciplines. Some days it's just tough. I'll be honest with you, I do this skipping. And, and it's hard sometimes going out when it's raining. You know, it's cold. But I always feel better for doing it afterwards. Mm. Are, you, are you straight out in the open air? There's no, like, kind of patio. Or no, let's go on a patio and skip. That's it. <laughs> go for it. I thought when you said skip, you meant an actual skip, and then <laughs> you were, like, waking into the skip. <laughs> no. <laughs> skipping. <laughs> 20 minutes, <laughs> constant, <laughs> a lot of boxer, skipping. <laughs> um, the song that you struck me there was, um, uh, I listened to the radio on my, um, you know, my one weekly shop, my state sanctioned one weekly essential shop, uh, listen to the radio, LBC on occasion, I have this great thing where I've got LBC, Magic, and then UBC all in a row. Yeah. So it's a temperature of, of hope. Where if I want to lose hope, I'll steadily go this way. Or if I want to gain hope, I'll go that way to UBC. Um, but the just out of nowhere came a recording, um, public service recording, or saying about from for men's mental health about taking a break, um, taking a little bit of time for yourself. And it just I hadn't realised that that was the exact same thing you were saying about you know your earphones in or yeah. you know, that 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 space and and i think for the recording that was more about just saying you know, men take that time but you're you're explaining how to use that time really well and so yeah. but i think what we're not good at doing is being kind to ourselves yeah. we're just not but for me going out if i didn't put my headphones in and go out and smash some weights or do something i think i'd go nuts yeah. <laughs> It can feel so confining. I mean, I've been used to being on the road for 20 years. Total free spirit. Yeah. Suddenly, this is the longest I've been at home at any one time. Uh, but my mental health is, I mean, I'm, I'm buzzing. I'm fine because I'm trying to, I'm, I'm innovating. I like a challenge, but I'm keeping myself fit and well. I think it does make a big difference. Mm. And your faith is proved in these times, isn't it, too? I think to a degree because you can always just keep looking up to heaven can't you and ask God to give you his peace mm. um, but 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 no shame in taking space or time and achievers feel guilty for not doing anything yeah we're, but it's all right <laughs> we're, we're exactly on that like <laughs> I think Karen, literally before I came on this call I was sitting upstairs on my sofa I wasn't looking at my phone I was I was just sprawled back and Karen said, you've not done anything for half an hour. I said, you not even looked at your phone. I went, too right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm achieving nothing. Yeah. I'm actually just resting. Brilliant. I've got a, I've got a meeting tonight at eight o'clock. I'm zooming into, into a ministry thing. 
to just give a little talk. And I'm going to come out of a, I'll do it out of a place of rest. Yeah. yeah. And I think don't achievers feel guilty, but I think bang on some junk telly, listen to some music, cook, cook a nice meal, like, you know, do, do, do something frivolous. Yeah. yeah. The people who shouldn't be doing that are people who are always frivolous. Then they need to get some discipline. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just want to finish, like there were a couple of questions that some of them are related to life in the church before lockdown. So apologies if they're not quite, um, no, heading but one of the things that because I'm a female leader I had to make sure that I did a little bit of research of how to engage and encourage men and there's yeah. that book um is it encouraging men to go to church but is there anything that you think that the church was either not doing to help men engage and I know men are different in terms of their characteristics and personality and they range all sides but I'm just aware of wanting to engage men in church and faith and keep them encouraged. Is there any thoughts you have on that? Do you know what? I actually think that out of this time, um, that this recalibration is going to properly help. Because I think what happened before was a man would go to church. And if you're a mechanic, a bus driver, you know, delivery guy, sparky, chippy, you never heard your profession mentioned. You know, we pray for caring professions. Um, you know, we've got the NHS clapping now, but now suddenly people are realising that lorry drivers are actually quite essential and delivery guys are quite essential and there are essential trades out there. And I think there's always a gap between worshipping in a church life, but you were more spiritual if you had a caring profession. Now I think we're realising that blue collar workers are quite important too. You know, and I, I think um, engage men, show interest in their daily lives. Look at look the things we're praying for, the way we worship, the language we use. Um, I'm, I'm talking from a mission perspective here, bearing in mind. Um, but I think I think this is this lockdown situation is solving a lot of that because suddenly we're realising how important the, the daily trades are that people have got. Yeah. The emphasis has come off that that Sunday event to a degree, which I think is really good. Because before you go to church, if you're a good bloke, you might be allowed on the sound desk. <laughs> yeah. <they're, they're, laughs> now, now I think you're realising there's a whole bunch of other things that we can do. I know you're a stand desk guy. Mate. And now I think there's, no, no, realize no. there's a whole bunch of other things we can do. You know, we, we had one, domestic violence has gone up through the roof, as we know, during this time. And we had one situation where a family had to flee, a woman had to flee with her kids. And we put some blokes onto it and we, we got a house sorted out, uh, trucks are flying all over town full of kit, you know, uh, a bit of plumbing was done, a bit of electrical work was done. I'm like, this is brilliant. You know, suddenly men are seeing their faith being worked out in, in the practical. And if we can maintain that, great. Absolutely. But I think also look at what we're praying for and what we're worshipping. I mean, it's a massive question, but yeah. that's, 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 a, that's a, a brief answer. I think, can I ask that one more? And then I'll... I, I just wanted to expand on that the thing <laughs> about the, the domestic abuse. is I'm trying to understand, uh, like, the psychology of why it may be increasing, rather than just saying, oh, that's because people in their houses. But just... I'm thinking, this is just purely off my dome here, is is that about men essentially trying to regain control in a time? And ultimately, it's it's a power a bad... yeah. ultimately, it's a power and control issue. And, uh, you know, I think we fall into dangerous territory when we say it's all about alcohol. We know alcohol consumption uh, consumption has gone up, but it just betrays what's already there, I think. So I think people are drinking more the tempers are framed, but this, this desire for power and control comes out and abuse happens. Mm. But I think there's as much mental abuse as there is physical abuse. But people are suddenly thrown in together. Of course, there is also the psychology of people trapped in very small houses with kids screaming, tempers fray, smash a wall, be intimidated, you know, blah, blah, blah. That, that's all happening too. So there's, there's terror and fear in people's houses because people are not coping well. But there are there are the deeper issues of power and control. I think that people are tipped over in this, aren't they? It's, break, it's sort of coming to the surface. Yeah. So really throwing back to that sort of get some Zeppelin on or something in the earphones. Yeah. Give yourself a yeah. few minutes. Yeah. yeah. Take yourself away. No, it's great. I think I just have one like one other question, which was um, so one guy put in: How can we encourage men to feel that they can be more open and more vulnerable with their faith? amongst each other and with God? I think that men moderate their behaviour. Sorry if this sounds really archaic, but I think men moderate their behaviour when, when women are present too. They, they, for whatever reason, 
rightly or wrongly, it's just a fact. But there is a there is a uh, an article written by one guy who was a barber that tried to create safe space for men when they're having a haircut, and he said, you know, that that people would go and get their hair cut, drink a coffee, but they'd share about their lives, their kids, their stresses, anxieties. And as soon as a woman walked in with her kids, the conversation would stop. Mm. And I've seen that. So I think if you want men to be encouraging their faith, form these single sex accountability groups, prayer groups, where there's precious, deep, trusted relationships and people could actually be who they are. Now we, we got our online pub. We do have men only nights. And the men come on and they and they will properly share. But, you know, people are zooming in next to their wood burners out in their gardens and stuff like that. Yeah. And they're properly sharing their feelings. And I think it's become more acceptable now, which is really good for men to share how they feel yeah. and admit their vulnerabilities, but they will still moderate their behaviour if the women present. There, there are some things that I'm not going to talk about in the presence of women. Fact. Yeah. It's just a fact. So I think we just got to get our heads around that and create those safe spaces, and you can do it over Zoom. No, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Oh, that's a good job. Is there? I mean, thank you again for for doing this. We it's going to encourage so many people, and we are so grateful. Is there anything else that um, you're either wanting to say just before we come to a close? No, I just just really grateful for the chat. There's two resources that the blokes might want to know about. One is Sunday Night Live, which is every Sunday at eight o'clock on Facebook and YouTube. Me and me mate Blackers. It's all the usual CVM carnage and interviews, but it's also gospel sharing. So you can put it in front of your mates. And the gathering is going online this year. Oh, fab. Um, 26th to 27th, uh, loads of promos coming out about that on Facebook or an email list. So, but it's, it's basically the whole gathering online. And I'll be on Facebook, that. where do we search? Do, do you want us to look at Facebook first? Search, you can uh, go to cvmen.org.uk. Or you can go to Facebook or you'll be on our YouTube channel. But you won't miss it if you look for it. Brilliant. It's going to be <laughs> Well, Brilliant. we do have a couple of men that watch the uh, uh, Sunday Night Live. So, uh, yeah, they'll be grateful to uh, know that there's more of that coming. So that's fantastic. Well, uh, I think that's uh, uh, us for now. Yeah. But thank, thank you. you. Thank you for Pleasure. coming to speak to us. Yeah, it's been great. Enjoyed it. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Mm.